Hey YouTube, I'm Sergeant Indy. Welcome to my turn-based strategy tutorial for GameMaker Studio. The first thing people think about when they think turn-based strategy games is a great big grid that all the action takes place on. That's the bedrock of most turn-based strategy games, so that's where we're going to start. So let's begin by creating a simple sprite. Create sprite, we're going to call it S node, edit sprite, 32 by 32 is fine. Let's go in here. I'm going to hit the uh, F key for our little fill bucket. We just want a great big white square with a black border all the way around it. Pretty easy. Very simple, but that's that's our square. That's where our dudes are going to be standing. That's where all sorts of other silly stuff is going to occur. But for now, that's fine. Green check out of here and there. Having our origin be 0, 0 up in the top left corner, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want, so green check out of here. Okay, now we're going to create our first object. And we're going to call it O node. We're going to give it the appropriate sprite by hitting this little drop down menu thingy here. Give it the S node sprite. Now, this little square will be the building rock of our entire map. So our pathfinding system is going to use them. Our characters are going to stand on them, they're going to target them, they're going to move between them, everything. These little guys are our workhorses, and we're going to tailor them to fit our game's needs. But for now, we need a simple create event. So add event, create, drag in a block of code. We're going to do neighbors equals ds list create. That's it. Easy, right? Baby steps. This guy's going to have a lot more data and a lot more stuff to do later, but for now that's all we need. But before I move on, let's talk about what this whole thing means briefly. I'm going to start talking about this. It starts with a DS, that means it's a data structure. Specifically, it's a data structure called a list. According to the GameMaker Wiki, a DS list is a data structure that stores information sequentially as it is added, much like a one-dimensional array. DS lists are very flexible data structures that permit you to add values at the end or insert them somewhere in the middle of the list, as well as giving you the ability to shuffle the order to randomize values or to sort them in ascending or descending order. What this list is going to do is hold on to the instance IDs of all of this node's neighbors, so all of the nodes around this node, and that's so that this node will know every node that touches it. Pretty simple, and like I said, it's very important for pathfinding later on. We can check out of here, and before we're done with this node object, let's add a little bit of debug utility. Let's add a draw event, regular draw event, drag in another block of code. Now, if you don't give an object a draw event, when it comes to time for the draw event to happen, it will automatically just draw whatever sprite you've given it. If you do give it a draw event, it overrides that behavior. So the first thing we need to do is draw self. So that'll have it draw this sprite when it comes time to do the drawing. Great. Let's also add it a little bit of draw text x plus 4, y, y plus 4, not t, and then string ds list size neighbors. And we need three parentheses and then a semicolon. Okay, so now all this is going to allow this to do is it's going to go sequentially, top to bottom. So it's going to draw itself, and then on top of itself, it's going to draw the number of things in that neighbor's list. So by default, zero, eventually it will have several, like four or eight or whatever. So that's it, pretty simple. It's time to green check out of here. And that does it for our node object. It's time to move on to our game controller. So, new object. I'm going to call this O game. And we're going to make a create event. And drag in another block of code. Now, eventually, this game event will do all sorts of things like track the turn order or, you know, keep track of when all of one side is dead and move on to the next room. But for now, we just needed to create our initial game grid. So, the first thing we're going to need is some sort of data structure to hold all of these nodes for easy reference. We can't just have a 
nodes wall to wall, floor to ceiling on our map with no organization. We need order. That's what that's what turn based strategy games are all about. They're about organization. They're about handling data well. They're about order. So we could use a lot of things for this. I mean, and I've used all sorts of things. I've made a probably like four or five prototypes to include this prototype that led to this tutorial. And I've used all sorts of things. I've used DS grids, global grids, arrays, and what kind of data structure you use here matters, sort of, but performance-wise it really isn't that big of a deal. So for ease of instruction right now, we're just going to go ahead with a simple 2D array. And we're going to go even simpler and we're going to make it global. If I do a more advanced tutorial later on, which I probably will, I think I'm going to settle on a DS grid, but for now, bear with me here, keep it things simple, global var map, easy. So this map will be in array in just a second for now, just a global variable. And what this global variable, this array is going to do, it's going to hold on to the IDs of all of our node job objects that we create so that we can easily grab them and use them later. More importantly, it will hold on to all of their IDs in the exact order that they're laid out in our game grid. So if we ever need the instance of a node, say at grid coordinate three slash four, so like, like zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four, like this node here, we could grab it and manipulate it with map three, four. And of course it's showing an error, but that's just because it expects an assignment operator equals five. So that, that's all it's expecting is an assignment operator or something like that. Okay, so we've got all these, we've We've got to make this grid. We've got to make this great big grid out of nodes, and we've got to stuff all of those nodes into this map array. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to tile this whole room to keep things as simple as possible. But before we get started on that, let's declare a constant that's going to be coming up quite a bit throughout this whole tutorial. So let's go up to this resources, click that, and then down to the define macros, click that. And I've already got it typed in from an earlier take, so let's pretend I don't. Grid size equals 16. And that is the 16, that's not right. Should be 32. Right? We have, yeah, grid size equals 32. And it, 32. Yeah, so what the 32 is, is that is the width and height of our node object. So, cool. Great. So, yeah, 32. Oops, my notes were wrong. Okay, so that's the size of our node sprite. And you'll see why that's important in just a second. So let's get back into this game controller create thing and let's do a couple of important variables. Map width equals room width divided by grid size. Map height equals, you guessed it, room height divided by grid size. What these variables will do is hold on to how wide and tall our map our room is in nodes. So it'll be like 12 nodes wide and like nine nodes high or, or whatever. And that's not really necessary. We could just do this math every time, but I'd rather make the code easy to read and have variables. As far as I'm concerned, that's, that's one of the most important qualities of variables is just storing information like this into them and making your code easier to read, especially in something as complicated as a turn-based strategy game. So that's pretty simple. These couple of variables will just know how many nodes wide and tall a room is. Great. Time to make the grid itself. So create nodes. I'm going to do a couple of for loops. So for xx equals zero, xx less than map width, xx plus equals one. Y, oh, there we go. Okay. For yy equals zero, yy less than map height, yy plus equals one. If you mess these up, you're gonna give yourselves an error. So make sure it's x map width, y map height. That'll definitely throw in an error later if you're not careful. So now we need to do something. So map xx, yy, that's our array, and we're, we're making an array right now as we're doing this. We're filling it with information and that's making an array equals instance create x x times grid size y y times grid size 
O node. Okay, so for loops, this will start at zero and it will do all of the things in here until, oh, and going up by one every time, until one is essentially equal to map width. Then it'll stop doing this. Ditto goes for this. So how this is going to work is we're going to start here at zero and zero. We're going to make an instance and then we're going to do the Y one next. So it's, it's, it's Y is one, Y is two, Y is three, Y is four. Keep making instances down. And then when we hit the end, ding, like an old typewriter, back up to the top. Now we're at X1, Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3. And it'll keep going like that until our whole map is tiled with these node objects. And what this is gonna do right here is that when we create this instance, it's gonna store the instance ID of the instance that we create into the array at that location so that we can easily go and access it later. So if we ever wanna fiddle with a node at a certain coordinate, it's in the array. So green check out of here and it's time to make our first game room. So rooms, create room. Now in here, don't really need to do anything. I like to go, and since our nodes are all white, I'm gonna go ahead and make our background like that color of purple. So if we see this color purple, we know something has gone wrong. Great. Objects, we're not gonna put any nodes in here. We're gonna take our game object, and we're gonna just tuck, I like to tuck my game controllers in the top left corner, makes them easier to hold on to. Pretty simple. Green check out of here, and it's time to run our game. Doop, doop, do, doop, doop, do. There we go. Awesome. So, look at that grid. Look at those nodes. They're all lined up nice and neat, ready for characters to stand on them, ready to move around. There's still a problem, though, and that's all those zeros because we're, we're not done yet. So, none of these grids know the IDs of their neighbors. And sure, they're all touching and they're all stored in the map array, but we need them to know their neighbors for pathfinding. That's super important later on. And that's what that DS list in the node is set up to do. So we need every node to know who is around them. So we need to populate all of those DS lists. So let's go ahead and close the game out and let's get our game controller back open. So back into game controller, back into the create event. Now we have this, we're already stepping through and oh, we're building all these nodes, great. But we can't do the neighbors here when we're creating them because like when the, this first guy is created, none of the other nodes are created. We, he can't possibly add anything to his list. So what we need is a second nested for loop, pretty much set up exactly like the first one is. So let's just go ahead and type it again. It's good practice. Let's do populate neighbor lists. Oh, more exclamation marks. Sound excited. Or xx equals zero y or xx less than map width xx plus equals one, four yy equals zero, yy less than map height, uh, yy plus equals one. Okay, so like I said, set up just like the last time. I'll talk briefly. Some people would just do x or whatever. I like doubling it because if I ever need to, like I have a huge block of code, not a block of code, like a huge, like if this, whole create event was a couple hundred lines of code long. I'd like to be able to go find XX and it will, it's it's easier to do it in a control F to find where all the instances of that are. It just makes it easier to do. So that's why I do that. Um, so now we need to populate these neighbors lists. And the first thing I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna do node equals map XX YY. So what this node variable is doing is it's storing whatever is in the array at x, x, y, y. And like I talked about earlier, that's gonna be an instance ID. Once you have an object, or once you have an instance's ID, you can access its data and its properties through a special character, the period. So we have the ID of, the, of a node stored into this node variable, and we can access that specific node's information sort of like this. We could do like node.x equals five. So that would take whichever node we're working with and we would set its X value to five. That's obviously not what we want. I'm just showing off. So now what we need to do is we need to access all of these nodes neighbor list so that we can populate them. So let's get started with a couple of simple 
if statements. But well, okay, so before we get started, once you're messing with an array, it can get pretty picky about how you go about doing anything. You cannot give an array a value below zero. So like this XX or YY, it can't be below zero. If you go, that's that's out of bounds, you'll throw an error. It also can't be higher than, like the XX can't be higher than map width, and the YY can't be higher than map height, because that would also be out of rounds. If you try to access data there, you'll also throw another nasty error. You don't want that. So with that in mind, let's get started. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna add a whole bunch of enters down here to the bottom so I can work kind of in the top middle of the screen. I think that's just easier on the poor eyes to try to carry on and pay attention to what I'm doing. So add left neighbor. If XX is greater than zero, because we know this left edge is they're all XX zero. So if the XX is greater than that, we know there's a node to the left. DS list add node dot neighbors map XX minus one YY. So we know there's somebody to our left because our XX, like if we're our XX is equal to one, we know there's somebody to the left and we can access that one by whatever the current XX is minus one. So if we're at say zero one, so like like this guy, I can go like, oh, well, I'm 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 one in the XX. So the guy to the left of me, he's zero. Done. Easy. Now that that's explained, let's knock out the other three cardinal directions, all pretty much in one go. So add right neighbor. If XX is less than map width minus one, because map width is our furthest right edge, so. If we're one less than that, we know there's somebody to our right. DS list add node dot neighbors map XX plus one YY. And well, let's talk about this DS list add real quick too. So the first bit in the DS list add is whatever list you're adding something to. The second bit is what value you're adding to. So it's the neighbor's list of whichever node we're currently working with. And what we're adding to that is the instance ID at this position in our map variable. Kind of complicated, but it gets a lot more complicated. So maybe I'll post some GameMaker wiki links in the bit below. I think I'll get around to doing that. So add top neighbor. If YY is greater than zero, DS list add node dot neighbors map xx yy minus one just like that and then add bottom neighbor if yy is less than map height minus one ds list add node dot neighbors map xx yy plus one okay all done next video we're going to start by adding the diagonals they're pretty easy for now save all this out green check and also let's let's clean the well let's yeah let's clean this up so it looks a bit fancier i like to leave spaces so that it's easy to go back and punch code in if i'm on a roll i don't like to mess around spacing and adding these squigglies or whatever makes it easier for me to code later if there's things I need to add. So, but we can green check out of here. And we can green check out of here. We run our game again and hope we don't get any errors. Okay, great. Look at all those nodes. All the nodes in the middle bit should have four because they're tracking a neighbor to the top, left, right, and bottom. Awesome. All the nodes along each edge should obviously be at a three because they're missing a neighbor and the nodes in the corner should only have two because they're missing two neighbors. So give your grid a good once over and if you're looking at what I'm looking at, great. If not, you know, rewind a bit and try to figure out what went wrong. We'll be adding the di diagonal neighbors at the start of my next video and we'll also be adding some basic mouse controls. This is the part of the video where I shamelessly beg for internet points. If you're enjoying the tutorial so far, be sure to like, subscribe, or follow me on Twitter, at Sergeant Indy. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have questions, run into problems, or just want to say hello. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.